my name is Donna Dorzinski, and I am the presenter for today's session. A uh, little bit about me, I've been in the business about 30 years, 15 years in big pharma, 16 years as a consultant with Best in Time DCP. I work with pharma, biotech, zeros, really anybody in the industry, helping them maintain regulatory compliance with a huge focus on TMS. I am a subject matter expert on TMS and inspection readiness. I'm a member, member of the steering committee for the reference model, a founding member of Santia, which is the Society of Nursing Sciences, Innovators, Entrepreneurs, and Leaders, and I'm on the Board of Trustees of Women Mercy. So been around a long time, done a lot of cool stuff. Our objective today is to talk about ex your regulatory expectations around TMS and ETMS management, identify some recent regulatory findings directed at TMS management. I'm actually going to go through a whole session on that. We'll talk about strategies for preparing an effective if you find yourself with an inspection finding, and then a plan for kind of preparing for a regulatory inspection. And you should anticipate the potential for an inspection, because what we know about EMA and MHRA is that they don't just inspect on submissions. They inspect as part of their GCP oversight program. And any time you are active in a country, you are at risk for an inspection. So I've literally had uh, worked with a company where we did not even have a active patient in the country, but within a few days of getting an approval for an investigator site in that country, we received a notification of inspection. 30 days later, the study was inspected. So it's not, you are active in a European country, that means you have an active site approved, then you are at risk for an inspection. So good to know, helpful to plan for. When it talks, we all get on the same page about what a TMS is. So a TMS is a standalone set of documentation that really does not require additional explanation from the sponsor or site staff. It tells the story of the study. So if you've heard me present before, you'll know that I like to talk about an inspection that I had where we were planning for the inspection, and when we went in to kind of assess we were, where we were at, we found with three studies, there were 3,000 documents between the three studies. So a little bit of a shocker there. So what we did is over the next nine months, we worked with our sites and the CRO to gather all of that content and get it filed in the TMS. Nine months later, we got an inspection. The inspector arrived on Monday. On Wednesday, she told us that the TMS was in incredible shape, that we had done a great job of managing it. She only really had a few questions. She spoke to two individuals from the study team, and she left on day four. So I definitely think that was what I call the vacation-motivated inspection. I think she must have been going on vacation or something because she was definitely not there to dig for issues. But with her inspection following the BIMO requirements, everything she was looking for was available to her in the TMS. To me, that's what we're all targeting for, right? We want that TMS where there's just not a lot of questions, not a lot of issues. And that's really what I want to talk about today. So the TMS is that collection of documentation that allows that inspector to evaluate the conduct of the trial, the integrity of the data, and the overall compliance of the study with GCP. So from that perspective, it's a collection of output from all functional areas, right? It's all the areas that are involved in the study. It's not just about the ClinOps group or the clinical development group or the data management group. It's about every group, right? So it's about all of the groups that are con contributing content. And when a functional group says to me, oh, we don't do uh, TMS content in our group, uh, I say, well, do you do work on the study? And of course they say yes, and then there we are, we have TMS content. And so it's really a organizational effort. It's not a functional group effort, right? So a single functional group should not be responsible for the TMS. It's an organizational approach. So what are essential documents? Because we hear the buzzword essential documents all the time. So according to ICH, essential documents are those documents that individually and collectively permit evaluation of the conduct of the trial and the quality of the data Produced. These documents demonstrate compliance of the investigator, sponsor, and monitor with GCP and all regulatory requirements. Looks pretty similar to what I said earlier about what constitutes a TMS, right? So basically, the true definition of an essential document is the TMS. However, 
as an industry, we like to give it all different uh, definitions. So I think that as an organization, you need to, to decide on what is your definition of essential documents. A lot of companies say, oh, well, it's everything listed in E6, but our TMS goes well beyond that. Okay, so I want to talk a little about E6R2 because there's a lot of content in there that's helpful when we think about what are TMS requirements. So one of the items is that the sponsor and investigator need to maintain the record of locations of their essential documents. So you need to be able to tell an inspector that where content is located. Where, you know, is it filed in your ETNF? Is it filed in your Argus system? Is it filed with your uh, CMC group and master control? Where is the content located? The TMF is all of the content, right? It's not just the ETMF. It's the, everything that makes up the story of the study. We know that everything doesn't necessarily go in the ETMF. 